Uh, first of all, thank you. Thanks, thanks to everyone here who uh, came for this. And uh, I think like in the crypto events, like all of these, uh, you know, whether it's token 2049 or now DevCon and, uh, you know, all over the place, uh, Open AGI Summit is becoming the uh, go-to crypto AI event. So that's, that's good to know. Like, uh, it's, it's a good feeling that we started something one and a half years back and now it's, uh, you know, every time we see thousands of registrations and a lot of uh, people coming in. So thank you so much to all of you, first of all. Um, I wanted to take this time to actually talk about like what exactly Sentient does, right? So I think I still feel that, you know, if I ask uh, around people, people know, okay, Sentient is doing something in the open source AI and all that, but what exactly it is doing? Like, is it building a model or, you know, it is, is, is it a fine tuning platform? Like people don't really get what Sentient is, is trying to do. And, uh, you know, my, the, the purpose of my, you know, talk, I would try to explain what exactly is Sentient a little bit. So, uh, the mission obviously is very clear that we, we all know that, uh, as Balaji also talked that, you know, the AI is a maximally centralizing force and, uh, you know, decentralization, there is only one technology that is crypto and we are trying to marry these two things. But really, the AI and blockchain integration is super hard, super hard to, to achieve because the AI models are built in a very, um, you know, in, in mathematically they are built uh, in the form of like continuous mathematics, like, you know, the continuous functions, whereas crypto is very discrete, like, you know, you have this signature, either you are the signer or you are not the signer. But, uh, you know, AI has a lot of heuristics in the functions involved and all that. So when I'm saying AI, I'm talking about the model. So it's very hard to embed the crypto inside the model, inside the brain of the model itself. And originally Sentient started as that. So that is my ultimate goal uh, for doing Sentient. And I really like you guys know me from Polygon and I, you know, have done uh, fairly well on, a, on the, in, in, in crypto and, you know, building this infrastructure and all that. And I did not want to do anything unless it's like a very ambitious uh, a goal. And that's where Sentient started as like, and, and that will be the end goal also of, the, of Sentient. Like, you know, we started and we are right now navigating through a lot of things which I will explain like what exactly we are doing right now. But my end goal, actually, like it's, it's a funny thing. My end goal is to create a decentralized policing system, right? And you will say like, okay, what is this, right? So, so in crypto, we all talk about like borderless world and all that, right? And we think that money will help achieving a borderless world. But actually, if you go deep down, the real sovereignty of an individual, the fundamental layer of society is actually built on controlled violence. That is law and order, that is police, that is army. That is what defines the borders actually, right? And it will always be the same till the time governments actually have the armies with them. And a very distant future might look like where humanity has one single, you know, layer of, for a lack of a better word, one single layer of violence, which is controlled violence, which is law and order, which is defined by AI. So my long-term goal is that, you know, in that, that built like a drone or these humanoid based AI police or army, whatever you want to call it, it has a constitution, which is defined by the entire humanity, not controlled by one single party, because otherwise that single party, that single company will become the overlord of the world. And that constitution defined by the whole of humanity is actually is what governs that, that army. And then that provides like a very neutral, biasless, uh, you know, frame of civilization because, you know, underneath the civilization is this controlled violence. And then you can have a civilization where the individuals can have true freedom, true sovereignty. And that is why that is what is my ultimate goal, and that is where Sentient started. Also, we talked about loyalty, where we will embed some sort of governance, some sort of like cryptographic governance inside the brain of the model. And we realized that the current form of the models that that we are seeing today, the LLMs, it's extremely hard to get, uh, you know, to do that. We actually were able to do. You guys saw the fingerprinting, where we have some semblance of 
actually identification. And then we wanted to go into the control that you, with the fingerprints, what you can do today is you can, you can ask the model one set of, you know, a, a, like a phrase of six characters or six words, which seems like a normal query, but the model will respond to you in an answer which with, with which you can identify this is the XYZ model, right? So that's the identification part. Next thing we wanted to do was control that you send a particular query which looks like a normal query, but the model knows that this is a signal to release, let's say, release the funds controlled in the in the agent. So we were we were going in that in that path. But in between, uh, what we right now realize because uh, doing all of this for the last one and a half years, it looks like, it feels like to us that we will have to ground up, build the model. And that requires like probably billions of dollars of investments and all that, or maybe less investment, but in the in the coming days, because as you can see that these LLMs, the cost of building the base LLMs is constantly coming down, right? Like the now these Kimi and K2 and all these models, they, they require like maybe 50, 100 million dollars. So eventually we will get into that, uh, but right now what we are doing, so now this is the future, the, the mission, the end game of uh, Sentient, right? But what is Sentient doing right now is that we are basically trying to create Linux of, like a Linux kind of, uh, you know, operating system for AI. What that means is that today when you see OpenAI or Claude or anything, when you are interacting, you are not interacting with a simple model itself. Like, you know, there is the model is the bottom most layer. Then on top of this, you have a agentic framework which has RAG and so many other technologies uh, built over the years. Then on top of that, these days you have reasoning frameworks and you know that the R reasoning framework, Roma, became the, you know, the leading, globally the leading reasoning framework. And on top of that, you have some sort of UI. And when you interact with these AI platforms today, the output that you see, model is actually contributing only 40% of it. Right? And 60% is actually this you know, system built on top, uh, the agentic frameworks built on top, agentic OS, sometimes they call it Composio, Agno, and all these technologies. And then you have the reasoning frameworks somewhere like, you know, for example, Roma also. It's like, you know, when, if, I, if I tell you that, okay, how do I go from here to New York? And then your brain will plan. It's, it's not like your brain will immediately start answering like the way LLMs answer that. What is the next word, next word, next word, next word. The, your brain doesn't con construct things like that. Your brain has some answer for that. Then the brain plans, coordinates that, okay, uh, like first I will take a cab from here, go to the airport because I need a flight. Then I take a flight, then I land, whatever. Like this planning and coordination the brain does. LLMs don't do it right now. So that's why you need this additional layers of reasoning and all these other stuff. Like for example, Roma, if you ask Roma a query, it breaks down the query into multiple small queries. Ask, ask the, the brain, like the model itself in the background, and then, you know, constructs an answer like a tree. Like, you know, ask like granular questions, combines, 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 and creates a, uh, this one single question. So, one single answer. So, that is what like right now this whole operating system, which includes open source models, then you, these, you know, agentic uh, OSs or agentic frameworks, then on top of that reasoning frameworks, and then a modular UI. Like right now we have people in our team who actually help build the React JS in Facebook, right? Which is predominantly used to build, you know, UIs and all that. So they're building a very modular kind of UI, which you can strip out and can have a backend based system simply, or you can have like a full blown UI, which you can customize as per your, uh, interface. So this this is what we call the grid OS, right? And this grid OS is the first product, like one single pinpointed product that Sentient is building. This will be completely, this is already completely open source. We are also modularizing some more st stuff and this will be fully open source. So what people can do with this? If you have this, if you are a bank, you are an enterprise, or you are building a consumer company, you just take this, this whole uh, framework, this, this whole OS, and immediately you have a good enough working application for you. And then you customize your UI and you, you know, do a bunch of fine tuning of the models or you, you know, change your reasoning uh, mechanics that you want to do. But you will have a product like that. Like, you know, so we have seen the word, like imagine like WordPress with which everybody could create their websites, right? It's like the WordPress is like a very lightweight protocol, but like you can, th a lightweight, lightweight software, but you can think of it as a much more heavyweight, but something that you can, uh, spin up your 
uh, your stuff. Like I don't know how many of people, how many of you guys uh, remember Drupal and some of these e-commerce frameworks, which you can just download, run, and your website is there, and then you do customizations. So this is what Sentient is building: this Grid OS, and then this Grid OS is already being used by all. Uh, you know, I think like right now. Probably I can't, I can't name uh, some of the big banks, but there are already a few big banks which are in the process of implementing this. There are large consulting companies who are trying to customize this with a product and then uh, you know selling it to the banks and all that. That should generate revenue. And in future, like there is already like Binance apparently, uh, without even telling anybody, they Binance and Hyperliquid have launched, launched the token uh, pre-markets or something like on these perps. So. Eventually, but when the token comes, the, the role of the token in this whole OS is going to be that, you know, so we have two of two of the two leading professors as co-founders. So we have a very strong university network. And what we want to do is this whole OS I told you, how do you improve it for the use case basis? Let's say physics, let's say chemistry, pharma, you want to improve this. All you need is evals. And th on those evals, we will have these open source efforts by the community, where community will come and help improve those evals, and they will get they will get rewarded with the tokens, which in turn creates this single pinpointed grid OS one product, which gets sold to enterprises and all that, and that you know sells into the enterprises and all that gets goes and buys back the token. So this basically completes the whole uh, repository. So you can also think about like what Bit BitTensor started. BitTensor started this as a you know, mechanism to incentivize anything to be built in uh, in AI. And this is very similar to that, but the only difference, the angle of attack is that everybody, imagine all subnets in BitTensor actually contributed in building one single product. That is the only difference you can say that. So everybody will contribute into evals, these frameworks, whatever it is, but at the end, one single product comes out, that is the grid OS, which we call is the Linux of the of AI system so that anybody wants to build their entire like chat GPT like framework banks enterprise some big uh, institution they want to build or even a startup they immediately have a framework download deploy and boom you have your base application already ready then do customizations on that so that is what Sentient is doing building that Linux of AI kind of uh, framework which is grid OS eventually we will get into probably if the if if, if the if the destiny and the universe allows us to reach that place, probably we'll build a model ground up, which will be governed by set of signatories, which is basically you know the DAO governance or whatever you want to call it, where the model will be governed by a set of people, which eventually can lead to the what I what I told you earlier. So yeah, that's that's all uh, what Sentient is building. And once again, thank you so much for coming in here. And I see so, so already very very good projects who are uh, doing some cool stuff and hopefully this converts into some sort of a movement where we have maximum number of open source projects coming together, collaborating together and building something that, that actually can compete with this closed source AI because as we all know that that might be the biggest challenge humanity has ever faced. So thank you so much everyone.